So, 10 years ago, I decided to leave vascular surgery in order to pursue a career in interventional radiology. Back then, I still remember my mother saying, interventional what? And ever since, I get that almost every day when I say to people what I do. I mean, I cannot really see you very well because of the lights, but can I see a show of hands? How many of you have actually heard interventional radiology before? No? No, that may not. Yeah. Should have stayed in vascular surgery, I think. <laughs> Another little question for you. How many of you in the audience have kids? I can't see you very much. But okay, let's, let's close our eyes for a moment and think of our happiest day of our lives. The day that will bring life to this world. The day our child is born. If any of you have one, ask your parents how they felt. Must be an amazing experience, isn't it? However, unfortunately, sometimes things can go wrong. And as you can imagine, when this happens, the consequences can be devastating. The uterus is an amazing organ in the pelvis of every woman. It's a muscular structure that contains lots of blood vessels that supply the developing embryo with all the nutrients and the oxygen I need to develop during those long nine months. During delivery, there's always a bit of blood to be expected. There's a bit of blood loss. However, sometimes, due to certain factors, this bleeding cannot be stopped, and it can be severe. This can put the mother's life in extreme danger. This condition is called postpartum hemorrhage. Yet, yeah, doctors like to put these fancy names into these conditions, but it's basically bleeding to death. Every year, almost half a million women lose their lives because of this condition. Half a million women around the globe. 99% of them are in low and middle income countries. 99% of them. In a recent publication in the Lancet Journal, it was shown that a woman delivering a baby by a cesarean section in sub-Saharan Africa is 100 times more likely to die than the same woman in Oxford or London. Can you imagine that? 100 times more likely. Unacceptable. But I'm sure you're all aware about the poor healthcare standards in Africa. I'm sure that this is not new for you. But we're, we're not talking here about a, an exotic virus. We're not talking about Ebola. We're not talking about the coronavirus. No. We're talking about a natural process. A natural process, though, that when it goes wrong, it can devastate the life of the mother as well as that of the entire family. We're talking about a silent humanitarian crisis here that no one is talking about, unfortunately. And this is why I'm here today. But what if I was telling you that with a couple of wires and catheters through a pinhole in the skin, we can stop this from happening? This is Charles' daughter. And he's considered by many as the father of interventional radiology or image guided surgery. His thinking was simple and brilliant at the same time. Since all your blood vessels in your body, arteries and veins, are connected with each other, if we can get access to one of them, and usually the most superficial one, then we can travel through the vascular network and reach every part of your human body, every part of it, and deliver therapies through a tiny pinhole. <laughs> yeah, I know it's a bit cheeky, sorry, I couldn't help it. <laughs> this, led, this concept led to the development of a new specialty called interventional radiology, which since then has revolutionized the way we perform surgery on the human body. And this is where I spend most of my day, 
subtly or not so subtly enough. I know it looks like a bit of uh, the inside of a spaceship, doesn't it? Well, that's the inside of an uh, interventional radiology operating theater. You can see the, pa the table where the patient lies. You can see the C-shaped x-ray camera that rotates around the patient taking pictures. So we can see where we're going. And of course, you can see the screen, the multiple screens we have where we can actually see what's happening inside the body through that tiny pinhole. We use a combination of very specialized wires and catheters to do that, as well as a number of smart devices like stents and balloons and microparticles to deliver therapies according to indication. And literally, we can treat disease from head to toe. We can unblock arteries in the brain to treat stroke. We can deliver chemotherapy in the liver to treat cancer. And of course, of course, we can block arteries that are bleeding, like the ones in postpartum hemorrhoids or those during trauma. And all this, all this can happen through this, through a tiny, tiny pinhole in your wrist or your groin. How awesome is that? These techniques have been so successful in managing and saving lives from postpartum hemorrhage that the Royal College of Obstetrics and Gynecology has included them in the management guidelines. You can't be in a hospital in London that delivers babies or treats patients with road tra from road traffic accidents or stab wounds or you name it who are at risk of bleeding without the presence of an interventional radiologist there 24-7. But again, let's see how it works. This little, screen, this little thing you can see on the screen, this is a balloon catheter. You can load this balloon over a wire and you can insert it into the vascular, into an artery or a vein. So when there is bleeding in the pelvis and let's say in the uterus, then you can identify those little arteries that bleed and you can insert two of these balloons through two tiny pinholes in the groin, inflate them in the artery and stop the bleeding from happening. And this is what it looks like in real life. And we use x-rays to visualize the good placement of the balloons, which you can see here with arrows. This woman was actually bleeding to death, and we had to inflate those balloons into her pelvic arteries to stop the bleeding from happening, from continuing. Her life was saved. The bleeding was stopped. Every year we perform more than one million of these kind of interventional radiology procedures across the UK. But it's not only that. Modern medicine is heavily dependent on medical imaging and medical imaging technologies. But we don't realize that very often. And you can see from this graph that the number of these tests is only going up. However, not everybody around the world is benefiting from this revolution on imaging technology. There are entire regions in Africa, South America, and Asia with very, very, very limited access to imaging technologies. There are countries in Africa with one CT scanner for every million of people. One CT scanner per million of people. And unfortunately, the same applies when it comes to medical devices. The same terrible situation all over the, in the same regions. Unfortunately, there's a big gap when it comes to imaging technologies between the lower and higher income countries. And usually, when we're talking about health crisis in Africa, we tend to forget that. We tend to focus on drugs and vaccines when imaging technology is essential to provide good clinical care. But of course, to be honest, I had never thought about that either until a year, year and a half ago when I had this discussion with Professor Byrne of Health Education England, one of the lead experts in global health. And we're discussing this during another trip for another project. And of course, I had never been to Uganda before either. This beautiful country of 40 million people in East Africa has a big problem that no one is talking about. 
He has 37 radiologists. 37. Oxford University Hospitals has more radiologists than the entire Uganda. More radiologists. At the same time, Uganda has one of the highest rates of mortality and morbidity because of postpartum hemorrhage and road traffic accidents. In other words, the young capital of this country is slowly and literally bleeding to death. We thought that something had to be done to reverse this terrible situation that affects the most young and productive members of that society. So a few months after that discussion with Professor Byrne, we performed the first assessment visit in the, in the country, especially and more specifically in Kampala, which is the capital. We evaluated the kind of available technology and kit that they have there, and we also had a number of meetings with the local stakeholders, like the Ministry of Health, the local university, and of course with the administration of the local hospital. And I was very happy to see that everybody was on the same page. Everybody could understand what we were talking about here. And of course, we deliver a number of talks, public talks, to inform people, the public, but also the doctors who work there about the potential that interventional radiology and imas guided surgeries can bring to the healthcare system of the country. When I got back, I, was, I knew that we had to do more. We could do more, but we could not do this on our own. We had to engage with international stakeholders, like with the Royal College of Radiology, with CERSI, which is the European Society of Interventional Radiology. We had to bring them in the game. This is Rosemary. Rosemary is one of the lead radiologists in, uh, in Kampala. And you can, see her the, her, you can see her on the slide presenting at CERSI 2019, which is one of the largest interventional radiology conferences in the world. She presented about what we're talking today. And I have to say that her talk was one of the most inspiring talks of the conference. But apart from raising awareness and all these promotional efforts, we tried to write as much as we could on different journals from different angles, trying to continue this, raising this awareness. And what I realized is that even my colleagues here in Oxford or London were not aware of how bad the situation is down there when it comes to imaging technologies. Apart from these efforts, we try to help the, the local team to develop the first interventional radiology postgraduate curriculum, and of course to develop a training program. And that's why we're planning to bring interventional radiology experts from all over the world to teach interventional radiology for two weeks every month for two years. It's going to be a long process, and of course we're still looking for funding, but hopefully we'll get there. In the meanwhile, we are working on improving the online training opportunities for the local reorts in collaboration with organizations such as the Rad Aid. And of course, of course, we are learning from other teams who are doing similar projects in the region, like teams who are doing intervention reology in Tanzania, in Nigeria, in Kenya. And we think that collaboration between those teams is essential if we want to make this project a success. And I'm very happy to say that a few days ago it was confirmed that the first team of Ugandan radiologists is actually going to visit Tanzania to observe interventional radiology procedures and start this learning process. There has been good progress over the last few years, especially in the region of East Africa, and we're very happy about this. But there is still, there's still a big gap when it comes to technology and education in these regions. I'm a sci-fi fan, as you might have realized. I don't know how many of you have watched the Elysium movie. Well, I'll explain it to you a bit. So the Elysium movie is a, it's a blockbuster movie with Matt Damon. And in this movie, the few and the privileged live away from this earth in a place called Elysium. In this place, amazing medical technology can cure everything where at the same time, the poor and the many live down here on Earth and suffer. Sounds familiar? 
Well, a few weeks ago, I was watching this movie again, and I couldn't help but think that the Elysium is actually real. And you know what? It's not, it's not up there somewhere orbiting around the Earth. No, no. It's right here. And we are very lucky because we live in it. The same life-saving technologies that we have available here are desperately missing from millions of people in an entire continent. Technology and innovation is a big part of medicine today. Nobody can deny that. Access to, to drugs and vaccines is obviously important, don't get me wrong. But without the necessary access to this kind of imaging technologies, we cannot deliver the good clinical care that we have to deliver. Without these technologies, the puzzle will always be incomplete. And of course, collaboration is key. I can't stress that enough. We need to bring in the medical device industry, the professional interventional radiology communities, and of course, the policymakers to make this happen. This is a huge task, but we can do this. Many people say that, you know, interventional radiology, the high-tech specialty is a luxury, really. It's not really a priority for the region. But for me, and our, and my, and our team back there, when it comes to saving young mothers from bleeding to death, no price is too high to pay. These people deserve it, like the rest of us do. Thank you very much.